Today I'm going to, t to explain to you how the key to changing the world is right in your wallet. This is a story about how the way we invest can have a huge impact on our greatest threats of our times. But most importantly, this is a story about my son Frederick, who started me on this journey and made me rethink everything I knew about investing. As a young child, Frederick was always moving, always curious, and above everything, he always wanted to win. Six years old, he would have competitions with his brother while in the bath to see who could hold the breath the longest. Frederick, he would emerge from his underwater adventures with a tower of bubbles on top of his head, demanding to know how long was I under this time. Frederick, he always loved the water. He was connected with it in some way, always wanting to be close to it. In the water, Frederick found huge opportunities. He would exercise, challenge himself, and make money. 12 years old, he would go fishing for crabs and then he would sell it to a local store. He quickly realized that he could sell it directly to the customer for an even greater profit by cutting out the middleman. As you can see, he was a natural entrepreneur. As Frederick grew, so did his sense for competition, his curiosity and need for stimulation. He began to practice free diving together with his brother. And despite my own fear, this soon escalated to skydiving. Frederick and his brother would find the energy and the motivation to get up four in the morning on a cold January day to go practice their free diving together in the freezing Norwegian fjords. I remember they used to come home talking about all the plastic they had seen in the ocean while they dive. And of course, this was a huge source for competition for Frederick, who always wanted to be the one who collected the most plastic. At 24 years old, Frederick had become a man that I was very proud of to call my son. He had become a strong, compassionate, and an environmental conscious young man. He, of course, also continued to stretch and challenge himself. He saw every experience as an opportunity to grow and to become a better version of himself. Even a holiday to Spain was an opportunity to him not to relax like you and I might do, but to use the pool to practice his free diving techniques. In the summer of 2016, Frederick did just that. Days before his holidays came to an end, he posted on social media that he had managed to hold his breath for five minutes and two seconds. You can try to hold your breath. Most of you will last for 45 seconds or a minute and a half. His new record put him into a professional freediver territory. As a mother, I had started to wonder if even Frederick is pushing himself too far. Although I felt it uncomfortable, I understood that this is Frederick's way of relaxing and living. A short conversation with Frederick calmed me down, and I was looking forward to him coming home. One phone call. That's all, that's all it took to to turn my world upside down. In one phone call, my heart stopped. Suddenly and without warning, my life changed. The words, Frederick has had a drowning accident, is the only word I can remember clearly from that day. 
I went into panic mode with only one thought of my mind. I needed to go to Spain. As a mother, I felt an aching guilt that I wasn't there to protect him, take care of him. I needed to be by his side. But I never made it to Spain because Frederick had died at the hospital. I never actually heard those words. I was spared from that pain. It was his brother who first learned that Frederick had died. I was incapable of anything but existing for a long time. My days became a blur of shock, guilt, disbelief, and a sadness that I never felt before. Losing my child is the loneliest journey I have ever taken. My suffering isn't isn't possible to explain. In those early days and week, I was obsessed with turning back time. I found myself desperate looking for a way to go back and redo that day. Now, even almost three years on, I still for, look for the clock that can turn back time. In the months Following Frederick's accident, I discovered that no matter how great my loss or how deep my grief, the world does not stop. In fact, it continues turning. Even though I will never accept what happened with Frederick, I know that every grieving parent has to find a way to live with their loss and its lonely journey. I know that I have to survive this. I have four other children who needed a mother. But everything had changed. I had changed forever. This includes my work. In one way, work seemed trivial and meaningless. But in another way, work seemed more important. I began to think that whatever I do, I'm going to make it really count. When tragedy happens, it can be birthplace for reason and relevance. It's an ongoing battle in me. The pain of surviving my child and finding a way to honor him and his time on earth. As the years go by, I have learned that a mother's love never become less. In fact, my love for my son has grown just as it would have if he was still here. I am still his mother. No child dies without a legacy, and I was going to make sure of that. And it was for my grief and my intense need for the whole world to remember my son that the Frederick Hermansen's memorial fund was born. It started with one million kroner, inheritance that Frederick had been left by his grandfather. This inheritance was supposed to be Frederick's 25th birthday, a birthday he would never celebrate. The fund became a way to honor Frederick and a way to let him live on. His love of the ocean was my inspiration to use the fun to create awareness around the env environmental problems. I remember an article that Frederick had posted on social media shortly before his accident, explaining that by the year 2050, we will have more plastic than fish in the ocean. It is something that I wish I'd spoken to him with at that time. This is a conversation that I will never have. Frederick's values, his inspiration and his qualities became the embodiment of his fun. His humor rem reminded us to love what we are doing and have fun along the way. His kindness brought awareness and got us thinking about how we treat the world and everyone in it. His entrepreneurial spirit 
told us that we needed to make money and use the fund to do that in a new way that cared for others, the ocean and the world at large. For me, the process of grieving and learning ran parallel to another. I entered a whole new world on both accounts. It became a crash course in learning about plastic or microplastic, cleaning up the ocean, and sustainable investing. Every day, I learned something new about the greatest threat of our times, climate change. Imagine Empire State Building. Now imagine 1,000 of them standing side by side. This is the amount of plastic that we produce every year. Our addiction to cheap plastic products and packaging are not just poisoning our oceans, but also ourselves. We create this problem, but it affects every living thing on this planet. Not caring, no humans seek convenience, not caring or understanding the consequences of our actions. One of the missions of Fredex Fund was to create awareness and let people know about the dangers of plastic pollution. We want to inspire people to care about the problem and to change empower them to take part of the solution. We began by organizing educational and inspirational conferences and create new information like this video. But perhaps my biggest realization was that maybe the plastic problems and climate change is so huge that we simply can't join a protest, or ask our politicians to fix it. We need to start with ourselves. As an investor, I know the power of money and its ability to create change. Once the environmental problems reach the stock market, I may no doubt that we will all see that change happens, and happens fast. But as long as our convenience fuels our consumption and our lives, the markets will continue, continue the way that they always have. But I have witnessed a growing shift in the stock market. Investors are becoming increasingly conscious of social and environmental consequences of their investments. Environment innovation and companies that work in sustainable ways are becoming the new face of the stock market. Investing is turning green. Through green investments, you can not only save the environment, but you can make money, a lot of money. Bringing together one's investments with one's values is always a challenge. But knowing I am supporting the types of entrepreneurs and companies that are creating the type of world that Frederick would live in encouraged me to make a change. I decided to sell all my oil and gas stocks and take the opportunity to align my values with, with my, or my investments with my values. Frederick's values. Now I only invest in green stocks. Frederick showed me a new way of investing. Not just in stocks, but also in the world in which I still live. One of the most recent investments made by the fund is a very special one, and I would like to share this with you all. Standing on TEDx stage here today required a great outfit. Most of us would go buy it at an expensive store, where only once before it disappears into our wardrobe, never to be seen again. Well, let me tell you, this is not the case today. I have rented this dress at an amazing startup called Fjong. 
this company not only gives you the opportunity to rent clothes from them, but also for you to rent out your own wardrobe. So ladies, is that not the dream? To make money on your own wardrobe? Instead of purchasing a new outfit for each and every event, I was able to rent this one, reduce my consumption and live a more sustainable life every day. That's why I'm here today, sharing my story and inviting you to open your eyes. Big changes start with small steps, and we all have the power to make a difference through our wallet. The tragedy of losing my son inspired me to make a change. And I want to inspire you to make a change for the better too, towards a better world, a world that Frederick believed in.